Bible would cause uh, obsessive emotional and mental reactions. <laughs> Wouldn't that be wonderful? If you couldn't get to your Bible, you just don't shake it and don't know what I'm going to do. Be a whole lot more people reading their Bible, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be something that if you didn't pray, you started having compulsive, uncontrollable dependence? Maybe something. Wow. You're a whole lot more people praying, wouldn't you? Yeah. Hallelujah. I believe there have been some people like that. I believe that there, there are probably people like that right now who could not go through a day without getting on their knees and laying out before God. And if something happened where they couldn't do that, they would actually start feeling bad, feeling conniptions, or feeling like something was wrong. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Or if they couldn't get into the word of God and, 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 and lean from it and, and hear from him. Now that's a good habit, y'all. That's a good, that's something that's going to build you up. Something that cause you to be strong. Hallelujah. You know, exercising is a good habit. Good physical exercise. Some of us weak because we don't exercise. Quiet <laughs> and so and so we're gonna talk about some bad addictions and we're gonna talk about some good addictions. And, and people have some strange addictions, y'all. I tell you, you'd be surprised some of the strange things that the, the things that we we hear about a lot are things like gambling, gambling addictions, people that just can't stop gambling. I mean, they can sit there and win a hundred thousand dollars. And instead of getting up and going home, they'll sit there till they lose every penny of it. They're addicted. It's an addiction. Addictions cause you not to think straight. Not to be, not to have logical thinking. Hallelujah. Gambling, alcohol, big addiction. A lot of people are addicted to alcohol. And a lot of times they don't even realize they're al alcoholic. I heard, I heard a testimony about a guy who was in church and a guy came up to get prayer. He usually didn't come to church, but he came with his family this week. He came up to get prayer and the pastor said, what do you want me to pray for? And uh, he said, Pastor, I think I might be starting to have a problem with alcohol. But he'd been having a problem with alcohol for years. I mean, they've been praying for him every day, Lord. Deliver my daddy from alcohol. Deliver my husband from alcohol. Yeah, I think I might be starting to have a problem. Uh, and, and that's the way it is. People that, that are addicted to alcohol, they feel like they can stop whenever they want to. They just don't want to, you know. No, they can't stop whenever they want to. Because they're addicted. So an addiction will do to you. It'll make you think you're not, but you are. And of course, drugs. Drug. And usually when you say drugs, people, the first thing they think about is heroin, cocaine, you know, those, those uh, street drugs. But I, I, was, uh, I was in a group one time with pastors, and this one pastor pastored a church way up on the north side of town, very rich church. And uh, this had been years ago. And, and at the time, um, our church was over on, on Schofield, and we had, a, we had a drug program going on in there. And, you know, we were just sharing. I was sharing with him what we were doing. He was sharing what they were doing. And he looked at me, and he had this very rich, I don't even, they might have had two black people in his congregation. <laughs> and you know what he told me? He said, I probably got more drug addicts in my church than you do. I said, really? He said, yeah, they, they get theirs legally, though. Prescriptions. Praise the Lord. How many people are strung out on prescription drugs that the physician fills out for them? Whenever they say, I'm having a little, little pain, doctor. Here, take this. <laughs> Just as addicted as they can be. Drugs. Legal and illegal. Then there are eating dishabits. Disorders. You got people that are called bulimia. 
you know, you have what they call bulimia. Bulimia. They'll they'll eat. They have a, a, a they're bingy, and then they'll go and vomit it up because they're afraid they're gonna get fat. Bulimia. It's an addiction. And then there are people uh, that are called anorexic. Anorexia. It's another one. And these are usually young ladies that feel like they're fat and they're as skinny as a rail. They look in the mirror and see a big fat person. And they ain't got no skin on their bones at all. Because of that, they won't eat. And what they do eat, they'll throw it up until they just wither away. That's a, that's a sickness. I guess all addictions are a sickness. It's, it's a mental thing. I mean, why, why can't you see what everybody else sees in that mirror? Why, why do you see something fat and it ain't an ounce of fat on you? It's, it's a mental thing. Praise the Lord. And then, of course, overeating. It's a big habit. It's a big addiction. He didn't nobody say amen on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. He shall know the truth, and the truth will make you mad. If you let it, it'll set you free. Hallelujah. Yeah, we 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 uh you know that, that eating thing is just you gotta do it. But then when you overdo it, you know, our, our nation is there's a nation of people that are overweight and uh Many are obese. And obese is another level of being overweight. And it's because we eat too much and too much of the wrong stuff. Praise the Lord. And we get addicted. Some of the other things that addict us, addict, we get addicted to are sugar. I know it's going to get quieter and quieter and quieter and quieter. We love us some sugar. Yeah. And, and here's, the, here's the crazy part about it. You can't live without it. Did you know that? You can't live without sugar. Only problem is you get too much of it. <laughs> Way too much of it. It's not like you can't live without water. You don't jump in it and stay under it for about two hours without no oxygen. You can't live without it, but you go down there, you're going to die. <laughs> but just because you can't live without sugar don't mean you should be eating all of it that you see. Praise the Lord. Because then it becomes a poison to you. It becomes something that actually does you harm instead of doing you good. How about caffeine? Caffeine is another one. Sometimes folks can't, can't get going until they have their coffee. Couple of cups in the morning, get me whoop, yeah, and it'll get you hyped up too. That caffeine will, hey, put some spark in your step. <laughs> yeah, nicotine. A lot of people are still on nicotine, smoking, smoking, and chewing, snorting, all kind of stuff. But nicotine. You get addicted to cigarettes. How about television? Addicted to television. I, I remember when uh, my, my first dental office over on Keystone, back, back in the day, I started getting people that would uh, either not make appointments or cancel their appointments, and I found out the reason they didn't want to come was because they were going to miss their program. They was addicted to the soap operas. I know some of y'all don't know what soap operas are, but as the world turns, and the general hospital, and the edge of night, and the, the young and the restless, them programs were on for centuries. No, not, not really centuries, but <laughs> it seems like it. I mean, I was a little kid, and the thing about it is a lot of, a lot of people that get addicted to those programs actually start acting like those people are, those, those things are real. I've heard people get up in church and start asking prayer for the people on the soap operas. Because he just, he just doing her so wrong. 
I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Don't you know that's all fake? That's <laughs> but it gets, it gets into their spirit. And it becomes like it's real. And they get addicted to it. They don't want to miss a single day. Television and the other stuff that comes on television, a lot of stuff that, that you sh we just shouldn't be watching, y'all. Just shouldn't be watching. And, and not only on television, on the internet. As, as good as the internet is and as, as much as it supplies, there's some stuff on there we shouldn't be watching. The stuff you get addicted to. Now, Facebook is nice, but if you can't move without look, seeing what's on Facebook, something wrong. Some of us are addicted to Facebook and Instagram and TikTok and some of the rest of them. I don't know what all of them are. Just, just can't operate without that. Some of, some of us can't operate without seeing our astrology thing. What do you call it? The, the horoscope, yeah. You got to see what my horoscope says. You better see what your Bible says. <laughs> Stop depending on the stars. I tell you what, the stars are going to be there when you long gone. The stars ain't thinking about you. Jesus is, though. See what the Word says before you move. Don't see what the stars say. See what, see what the Word says. Our cell phones. Many of us are addicted to our cell phones. We cannot move without my cell phone. I will not be. Where's my phone? Where's my phone? Where's my phone? Where's my phone? Make sure it's good and charged up. I, I, you know what? I should have. I got this little clip that I got a long time ago, but it's, it's a little uh, thing where these guys got together and they were talking about. And so this one guy tells the other one, you, you can't go a day without that phone. He said, oh, yeah, no, this phone, I can go without it. He said, well, give it here. He said, here. And a couple of minutes later, it starts ringing. Ring. <laughs> the guy, he looks around. He says, uh, I, I, I probably better get that. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. We, we, get, we get attached to those things. And, and, you know, fasting, fasting helps us if we let it. Fasting will help us get unattached to all these things that have their claws in us and put chains on us. We don't, we don't realize how bound we are with chains of bondage. Hallelujah. Cell phones. Uh-oh. This next one. Sex. You see how quiet it got? There are some sex addicts, y'all. Now, sex is not bad. If it wasn't for sex, none of us would be here today. Praise the Lord. In the proper context, sex is beautiful. Within the confines of marriage, matrimony, God created it. Praise the Lord. Outside of marriage, though, yeah, you have some problems. That's not what God created it for. Not, it's not a recreational game. Praise the Lord. So uh, it's to be uh, between a husband and a wife. Praise the Lord. But you have people that are addicted. And they, they're into things like pornography. All kind of perversion and stuff. They're addicted. We are we already talking about eating, about food. The people are addicted to food. Just to name a few, Pepsi. Some people love them some Pepsi. See people walking out the store with cases of Pepsi, man. <laughs> just, yeah, in the great big bottles. Just yeah, Pepsi. It's addicting. And anything that's addicting, you need to learn how to, if you can't stop doing it, then you're addicted. And you need to deal with it. You need to stop doing it. Nothing, nothing wrong with coffee, but if you can't go a day without drinking it, you need to stop doing it. 
You need to loose yourself. Praise the Lord. You know, sugar, sugar, you need it to live. But if you can't go a day without a dessert, you need to loose yourself. You see how quiet it got? I got one amen on that one. <laughs> Hallelujah. I got one of my brothers. He, he, uh, he eats his dessert before he eats his regular course meal. Now, he didn't do that while we was living at home. Mama wouldn't allow that. But see, when you get grown up, you do what you want to do. He, so he, he, and I said, why you eat your dessert before your food? He said, because if I get too full, I want to make sure I eat that. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, have mercy. The part that you need the least. <laughs> Mountain Dew. Another one. Uh, how about money? There are people that are addicted to money. You know how I know? Because they will kill you over a dollar. That, my friend, is an addiction. When you are so into money that you would take somebody's life over a dollar. Or less than that. I have people over a nickel crap game. Money. Addicted to money. Careers. Uh oh. Now you know careers, your career is not bad. But it is if you're addicted to it. If that's all you think about all the time. That's all you give your time to all the time. No time for God, no time for your family, no time for nobody else. Because of your career. Some people are addicted to celebrities. I don't know who all the big time celebrities are today. When I was coming up, it was oh, Will, Will Stilt. Wilt Chamberlain, them guys. Uh, I guess it's King James today. What's the name? Uh, LeBron James. <laughs> uh, but, you know, people get attached to those people, those celebrities, whether they be um, rock stars or whether they be sports stars. They, 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 they know more about them than they know about Jesus. If they, they're a bad baseball player, they can tell you all of their stats. All the their, their batting average and all that stuff. They'll tell you right down the line. Basketball. I, I, I remember years ago, I, it, it, we was in church getting ready to go from Sunday school to church. And you know how you go to the restroom in between, so you don't have to be. And there was a couple of brothers out there arguing about who the best basketball player was. I forget who the two were that they were talking about. You know, two of the star players. I mean, they was almost getting ready to go to blows, y'all. So-and-so is better than so No, he ain't. Hey, look at you. Like, no, man, what are you talking about? Man, you crazy. Yeah. I said, really? No, I ain't seen y'all that, that excited about Jesus in a long time. <laughs> but you excited about a basketball player. Somebody can put a ball through a hoop. What difference does it make who's the best basketball player? You know, you stop and think about some of our addictions. They're really kind of silly. Things that we get into. And, and, and my point is, we need to get into Jesus like that. He's the one that we ought to be getting excited about. And worked up about. And can't do without. But we let all this other silly stuff do it. Celebrities, and games, and sports, and, and even relationships. Relationships are important, but I tell you, it, 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 just recently, I had a friend who had a tragedy in his family. His son was killed, just really no reason, you know, just a matter of be being at a place, it didn't have nothing to do with what was going on, but just being there and he was one of the fatalities uh, over a, a 
guy and, and your and, and the baby's mama, you know, type of thing. And, and and that's a lot of lot of lot of relationships. And and here's the deal. I think this is what happens, y'all. See, when you don't when you don't let God be God, you start making gods out of other things. You start making gods out of people. You start making gods out of careers and God. You, the devil don't know what he trip. He don't care what he trip you up on. If he can just have you not have Jesus in his proper place in your life, he know he can trip you up. And so, as, as much as we need to love our significant other, don't put anybody above Jesus. Nobody. Nobody. Your husband, your wife, your children, your parents, nobody. Nobody can be God but God, y'all. They can't do it. And when you start making them God, that's the problem. And that's what happens. People make gods out of other people. And then when something happens, a relationship breaks up and somebody else steps in, then they want to go around killing folks. Hallelujah. So relationships, you, you, you can be addicted to a relationship. Hey, how's this? Eating tissue. There's people that eat tissue. They're addicted to that. They eat chalk. There's people that eat chalk. See, y'all heard of some of these. Eating chalk uh, about pizza. Well, I got quiet there. I knew I was going to get quiet. Some of us love pizza. How about hair and hair follicles? People eat hair, y'all. They're addicted to eating hair. Hair follicles. Some other strange addictions, uh, adults sucking their thumbs. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sleeping with a blow dryer. Excessive tanning. It's just trying to get darker and darker into tanning. Cyber sex. Fetishes. Y'all know what a fetish is? You can have a fetish with feet. Where you just, when you see somebody's feet, you just get, <laughs> get stirred up. I'll leave it like that. <laughs> That's a fetish, you know. <laughs> How about purchasing shoes? Well, I done gone to meddling now, see. <laughs> why? Tell me why you got a hundred pair of shoes. See how quiet it got there. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's, 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 it's part of that shopping addiction. Shopping addiction. And, and today, people have addictions of hoarding. Hoarding stuff. Where you can't even get through their house with all the stuff that's in there. Don't throw nothing away. Even old McDonald's hamburger bags and stuff. I don't want to throw it away. You know, just I might need that. <laughs> you never never know. I might need it. <laughs> just trash everywhere. You just it's it's an addict it's it's ho hoarding is an addiction. It's, you need deliverance. And, and, and um, I tell you, I, I think most of us might have a piece of that one. Because I got stuff, you know, as, as you get older, you start looking at stuff and saying, you know what, I'm only be here so much longer. I need to start getting rid of this stuff, you know. And so you start looking at stuff and stuff you haven't looked at for years. And thinking, well, I guess I could get, well, I don't know, I might need that. Wait a minute, you haven't touched that in 40 years. What you, what you need it for, you know? Well, you never know, you know? No, you're a little addicted there. Hallelujah. And so, and so we need to um, let this, this fast help us, amen? Help us in, in getting rid of some of the stuff that we have. And, and, and so that we're not hoarding stuff, um, especially if you 
if you lived in a, a larger house and you've had children and everything and all the kids are gone, now just you and daddy or you and mama in the house and, and you still got all this stuff, what's going to happen? You move to somewhere smaller, you ain't going to be able to get in there, all your stuff. Praise the Lord. So you need to start getting rid of some of that stuff. Amen? Yeah, these things can become an addiction. They, they can become an obsession. So an obsession is what preoccupies or dominates your thoughts, your feelings, and your desires. Praise the Lord. It's when you think about something unceasingly and persistently. Just can't get it off your mind. Some of y'all remember when you felt, first fell in love, you just couldn't get that other person off your mind. Boy, it got quiet. It? <laughs> you know, you just couldn't wait till you could call them on the phone. Then you wouldn't be saying that. Just be breathing over the phone. <laughs> and after y'all been married a couple of years, <laughs> hallelujah. And, and we think that's love, but that's not really love. That's, that's what you call infatuation. It's infatuation. And, and love hopefully develops in the relationship. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> and, and, uh, but but you, have to, you have to be careful. You have to be real careful in, in what you allow to, to dominate. You know, and, and, you know, it, I, I'm not saying anything is wrong with that when you're in a relationship and you're thinking about getting married thinking about, you know, spending your life with a person, you know, please try to hook up with somebody that, that you like a little bit at least. Praise the Lord. <laughs> if you start out not liking each other, I don't know, you know. <laughs> I don't know where you can go when, when all them goose pimples go away, you know, from the infatuation. Hallelujah. And as the love develops, hallelujah. And so here's the deal. All sin tends to be addictive. And the end point of sin is death. Praise the Lord. The saints of God, um, we shouldn't love things more than we love God. And we need to See about being like the house of Stephanus that we read about, where he was, he had an addi addiction. They were addicted to the ministry of the saints, addicted to things of God. That's where we need to be, y'all. That's where we need to be. So um, here's, here's some things. I, I want you to uh, think about these things. I, want, I hope you can answer yes to these questions I'm getting ready to ask you about the things of God rather than the things of the world. Now, if you answer yes about the things of the world or these things, then you've got a problem. But number one, can you hardly wait until you are alone so you can feel the sensation that comes from the experience of being around God? David said in Psalm 16, 11, in thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Is that the way you feel about being in the presence of, of uh, the Holy Ghost? Are you a Holy Ghost addict? <laughs> or is that the way you feel when you get around some nice looking shoes? <laughs> Or the mall. <laughs> is that the way you feel when you're getting ready to watch a basketball game? A football game? See, we're talking about what pushes your button. Everybody's got a button, y'all. Everybody's got a button. The thing is, what's pushing it? For too many of us, it ain't Jesus. It's something else. And that's not to say that you can't have interest in anything else. You know, there's nothing wrong, I guess, with a ball game. I know when we were coming up as saints, they didn't allow you to go to ball games. And I used to wonder about that. What's wrong with the ball game? Till it got to be today. And people skip church so they can go to ball games. 
people take their, their kids out of church for a whole season so they don't miss practice, don't miss no games. And I say, oh, them old preachers knew something we didn't know. Because they knew that it uh, didn't matter how, how high up you went on the team, it still is not worth your soul, losing your soul. After you win all the Super Bowls and everything, what does it profit you? So you won a Super Bowl. So you got a Super Bowl ring. So you got five of them. So you got ten of them. So what? Is that going to get you in heaven? What's that going to get you in eternity? Zero. In fact, somebody made a comment the other day and I thought about it. Wow. They said to the fact that you could go to a pawn shop and get Super Bowl rings. Ain't that something? Because the people that want them figure it out. You know, I can do more with a few dollars than I can do with this ring. <laughs> so what pushes your button? Number two, do you find yourself avoiding people who may interfere with your addiction? I'm talking about your addiction to Jesus right now. There are people that will interfere with that addiction. They want you to hang out with them while they get drunk with their addiction. So how does it make you feel? People try to get you away from your addiction if you're addicted to Jesus. 2 Timothy 2.4 says, No man that wareth entangled himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Because a spiritual addict doesn't have much time to spend with people who don't share their love for Jesus. Number three, you find yourself daydreaming about your habit. I tell you those on drugs do. They daydream about the next fix. Time they wake up in the morning to the time they go to bed, they thinking about where they gonna get their next fix from. Are you thinking about that like about Jesus like that? When will I have my next encounter with my Savior? Hey, glory. When will I feel his next touch? When will I hear his voice? When will I see his glory? Praise the Lord. The Holy Ghost addict constantly has Jesus on their mind. Number four, do you regularly turn to your habit when you are in trouble? That's what the other addicts do. If they're alcoholic, when they get in trouble, what's the first thing they do? Get a bottle. <laughs> they think that's going to solve all their problems. And it probably does for five minutes. But for however long they load it. <laughs> but when they come down off that high, the problem is still there. Hallelujah. When you're addicted to Jesus, though, you got somebody to help you in your problem. For real. Praise the Lord. Psalm 23, 4 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff they comfort me. You know, addicts feel invincible when they're on their fix. They do. I've, I've seen, I used to, I, when I was in a band years ago, it was based out of Terre Haute. And I lived here, and there was another guy in the band that lived here. And uh, so we would go over to Terre Haute together on the weekend to cook up with the other guys. And, and uh, he was, he, he was on, he he fired up heroin, you know. Yeah, I, I I did some of the drugs too. I ain't gonna say I didn't, but I didn't do that one. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I think I was scared of it, you know. <laughs> I, I did the light stuff, but you know, while we were driving, I would see him fire up. He put this thing around his arm, and and uh, you know, I'd be driving just watching him, and and he would kind of be shaking. But as soon as that stuff hit his vein, it was like he was just. 
He was like a different person. He was relaxed. He was like, you know, almost invincible. Just, and that's, that's what that stuff does to you. That's what Jesus should do to you. Don't you know your God is invincible? <laughs> that no weapon formed against you will prosper? That you his child? That you fully filled with his spirit? Praise the Lord. Number five, do you get upset if you cannot partake in your habit for an extended period? Somebody said, yep. <laughs> Hallelujah. Psalm 84, 1 and 2 says, How amiable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts. My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Hallelujah. The spiritual addict has serious problems when he cannot experience God's manifest presence regularly. Is that you? When it's time to go to church, I know the pandemic is on and everything, but even before the pandemic, when you're the one to say, I got to get to church. I, just, I know my toe is hurting, but I'm going to church. And I got a little cough here, and I know you're not supposed to come now if you got a cough, but hallelujah. Some people let anything stop them from coming to church. And that just shows you. But you know what? They make sure they get to the game. They will get to that game. If there's a party or something, they're going to be at the party. Oh, y'all getting quiet now. We, we, we can go, we go where we want to go. Praise the Lord. We do what we want to do. And the things we don't want to do, we don't do. And sometimes that's the things we ought to do. Praise the Lord. And, and, and here's the deal. You make those decisions. You make the decisions of what pushes your button. The things that you really want to do need to become the things you really need to do. Hallelujah. Number six. Do you prefer to be with other people who have your addiction? How many know alcoholics like to hang around with alcoholics? Amen. Drug addicts like to hang around with drug addicts. People who love to shop like to hang around with people who love to shop. People who love football like to hang around with people who love football. They don't hang around with people who like ice skating. <laughs> if they don't like ice skating. They hang around with people that like the same thing they like. So they can, they can have the same experience together. What the psalmist say? Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast of the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be good. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. You want to be around people who like to magnify him like you do. You won't be around people and say, what you doing all that for? You don't take all of that. I won't be around you. I want to be around somebody that, that love him like I do. Don't mind getting up and, and jumping up and down and calling out the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. You go to the ball game and jump up and down and call out the name of the person out there playing. <laughs> Hallelujah! Psalm 84 and 10 says, For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of witness. The real addict is attracted to people who feel the same way that he feels or she feels. So I hope, did any of y'all answer yes to any of them questions? I hope you did. I hope you answered yes. Yep, that's the way I feel. That's exactly the way I feel. Yep, that one too. Yep, that's me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Tell you what, we get us a church full of people like that, we're going to have something. Hallelujah. Because the, 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 the deal is that, see, that's, that's where God likes to hang out. 
He likes to hang out with people who likes to praise him. Hallelujah. Every Christian should be addicted to these things, you know. Need to be addicted to God's word. Jeremiah said, thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me joy, rejoicing. You need to be addicted to prayer. I remember Daniel was so addicted to prayer that even when his life was on the line, he still kept on praying. When they said, you're going to be thrown in the lines then, he said, well, praise the Lord. Let me find my prayer spot. That ain't stopping me. I'm still going to pray. We need, and that's an addiction, y'all. We need to be addicted to praise. Amen? And not, don't let a little trouble stop you from praising God. Count it all joy. That's what the Bible says. When these temptations come, count it all joy. Hey, glory. Psalm 122 and 1 says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. How many glad when it's time to go to the house of the Lord? I don't know, Pastor Bryant said, these people don't even stream it. They don't even have to come. All they have to do is turn on their device, <laughs> and they still won't go. Praise the Lord. So uh, we, need to, we need to get, get uh, serious about the things of God. Amen? Be addicted to, uh, I think, is that the children I hear coming? Or is that something on the system? Oh, okay. Well, we're gonna we're gonna stop right there then, um, and praise God. I, my my hope is that we will be addicted to the things of God and and encourage others to be addicted to the things of God. And during this fast, during this time of consecration, spend more time in your Bible, less time on television, more time. In prayer, more time on your knees, less time on Facebook and the other things that, that steal your time away from God. I'm telling you, you'll be the better for it. In Jesus' name. But, uh, for you that are on streaming, if uh, you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, that's the one we've been talking about. That's the one that you need to get addicted to. That relationship, that's the relationship you need to have. You need to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Ask him into your heart. Repent of your sins. Get baptized in his name. Be filled with his spirit. It will change your life forever. And then, my friend, you'll be on your way to a heaven that he has prepared for you. The Bible says, eyes have not seen and ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those that love him. And that's you, my friend. God bless you if you want to come and be a part of our services. We're meeting right now at 5601 East 71st Street, Indianapolis, Indiana, 7 o'clock on Tuesdays for Bible study. 10 o'clock a.m. on Sundays for Sunday worship. Uh, we love you. God bless you. If you want to support the services also, the church, you can uh, give through the whatever platform you're streaming on to either Rock Community Church or to uh, Total Praise and Worship Center. In Jesus' name, we love you. God bless you. Amen. <laughs>